Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 2024 that says maximize the confusion of an exam. So guys, today we will understand this question in very layman terms and then we would move towards the brute force approach and then the optimized approach. So yeah guys, stick till then and watch the complete video. Now here in this question you are given one string known as answer key. The string consists of only two varieties of characters that is T and F. So T represent two. Uh, and f represent false here. Now here we need to find the maximum consecutive t or maximum consecutive f, right? So either t or f. Let's uh, let's summarize it that you need to find the maximum consecutive character. Okay, that character can be either true or a false, right? It can be any character, but we need to find that length of the maximum consecutive or how much time uh, it is repeating in a consecutive manner, right? So we need to find that number. Now here, additionally, you are given one character, uh, one integer k, and this integer k represents that you can change the value of k characters. What is it? So that means, so let's say the answer of i is true, then you can change its value to false, or if it is false, then you can change the value to true. So you can perform this operation k number of times. So generally, you can speak that you can change the value of k characters from uh, true to false, or if they are false, then you can change to true. So by performing this operation uh, like ch of changing the character value from t to f and f to t we can perform that k times and yeah by doing that we need to find what is the con maximum consecutive length uh, of uh, characters we can get right consecutive means same repeating characters okay so at the end we need to find that so uh, taking a look at the first example here we are given t t f and f and k equals to 2 so uh, let's say if we change the value of first to true to false then we will get uh, something like this so this will give us f f f f so after performing one of op uh, operation this operation two times that means changing the value of two, uh, two trues to false we can see that there are four consecutive uh, characters right four consecutive characters so that's why we return answer four uh, you can also do this you can either change this value of this to f to true and you will get t t t and t 4 times 2 so that will also result in answer 4 okay so anyways you will get answer 4 here here in the second example you are given k equals to 1 that means you can perform one change operation so in t f f t uh, let's say you perform this by change that means you change this true to false then you will get f f f t so here answer is 3 because there are three repeating characters that are consecutive or you could have changed uh, t f f f that means the line change the last character from true to false in that case also you will get the answer 3 that is the maximum consecutive character in this string okay got it so similarly here also you can uh, try it yourself how this uh, how you get answer 5 here it is easy uh, and yeah the constraints are uh, pretty much good like they are up to 10 to the power 4 so n square would uh, result in a tle uh, so you have to think of n log of n or and solution we go of n solution you can uh, think of either of them okay so yeah guys if you think of a brute force approach then what it would be so what here we are trying to do here is see in order to get maximum consecutive characters what we can do is we can uh, try to find uh, the maximum maximum consecutive length of characters by making all the characters to true okay so there would be two cases one if you try to achieve maximum t and second if you try to achieve maximum f so maximum t is nothing but after performing k operation we try to find what is the maximum consecutive length of a true okay that is one case so here in this case what we would do is we would try uh, to select k characters that are f that means they are false and change them to true okay so in order to achieve maximum t that is a string with a maximum true consecutive consecutively what we have to do is we have to change some intermediary f to true by uh, at max k number of times so in that way we can achieve max t or we can uh, try to achieve max false so that means the string with a maximum consecutive false character so that can be achieved by flipping the values uh, from true to false k times okay so simply let's say you are given something t t f f t f okay okay so this thing and let's say k equals to k equals to 2 here now uh, let's say if you try to if you want to achieve maximum true then how what what are the different variation of string uh, you should try to derive so it can be t t t t t f f 
so that means you change this for to false to true so this is the one uh, this is the here you have one two three four five five true characters right consecutively so here the answer is true you can also try to change this to f's to true but that won't result in the five so this is the best possible answer you can get by making a string with a maximum consecutive true characters okay now let's say if you try to achieve this max f so you can what you can do is you can change some t to f so how what you can do is uh, you will get resulting string like f f f f f f one two three four five six okay so here what we did is we simply change this true to false as well as this true to false and here our answer is six okay so now you compare max t answer and max f answer so the, this is maximum and this is your answer so what we are trying to do here in the brute force approach that either we are converting the string to maximum true or we are converting the string to maximum false and by comparing these two answers we will definitely get the maximum answer possible okay so yeah guys taking the maximum of maximum true or maximum and maximum false we will get the answer now the question that arises in your mind then so let's say okay so till now we think that clear but let's say we want to achieve maximum t in that case we have to also select which false we need to convert to true so here we have choices right here we have choices either to convert this to or to convert this to false to true in order to achieve maximum t so how to do that so in order to uh, make a k efficient flips what we would do is we would keep a range of i to j okay and if the count of f uh, means in a range and we would try to keep count of f less than equal to k so so when we are trying to, when we are trying to find maximum t we would find a range all these ranges right from 0 to 5 from 1 to 7 like this in all this all different ranges where my count of f is less than equal to k we would try to achieve that see if it is greater than k then the range is invalid okay so we will find that longest range from i to j and where count of f is less than k so if you are finding maximum t then we will have to find count of f okay so that's why i wrote count of f here so that leads to what that's lead to sliding window so in sliding window we keep a left bound right bound and we would uh, we would check how many falls are there in the in this bound if the number of falls are greater then we would move this left bound towards the right okay if they are lesser then we keep on incrementing the right bound okay so that is how we will check for different sliding windows and at the end we would take uh, the maximum length of the valid sliding window so valid sliding window is nothing but uh, a window that has count of f less than equal to k oh, okay so yeah uh, we would maintain uh, this by sliding window and we would do this for maximum t as well as for maximum false so let us take a look at a code code is very much simple here so here i have initial as maximum t number of false and this is just a basic end. so here in this first for loop we are trying to find maximum t so I, I have initialized the left bound of the window to zero as well as right bound to zero now if at any point of time we get uh, false then we simply update the count of number of false now if the number of count of false is less is greater than k then in that case what we would do is we would move our left bound towards the right okay so that means we would simply update i plus plus as well as decrement the f uh, if the answer if the uh, if the ith bound or the ith character is f so we would decrement so yeah this way uh, so initially our window is at 0 0 then we move to 0 1 uh, then 0 2 then 0 3 now let's say at this point where ith index is at 0 and jth index is at 3 uh, the count of f is uh, greater than k then in that case what we would do move i towards the 1 so the new window is 1 2 3 if we, if now the this is this condition uh, false then move out of the for while loop and yeah again iterate and uh, increment this right bound that is j okay so that's how we would find the max t and in the max f right we would do the same thing but with uh, by counting the number of true right and at the end we would return the maximum maximum max t and max f okay so this uh, is a uh, this will take time complexity of big o of n plus n as well as space complexity of uh, it is big o of one right so yeah that's one approach to solve this question and i hope you guys have understood this thing this is a, uh, like a very uh, fundamental uh, sliding window technique we are using we haven't modified anything in the sliding window yeah it is the basic sliding window now we can do some optimization here so what optimization we can do is as, a, as you have seen in the above code that we are trying to maintain max t and max f so we are using two for loops first and the second 
So instead of uh, uh, make doing the two for loops, what we can do is we can combine the logic of max t and max f in one single for loop. And how we would do that? Let's check it out. So here we are. We have taken this uh, string key and k equals to two. Now, since we are combining the logic of max t and max f, uh, right? So what we would do is we would uh, we, uh, the sliding window would be there, but on the condition where we have to update the left bound changes. Okay, how it will change? So whenever the minimum of number of true, comma uh, number of false and number of true is greater than k. Okay, so if this condition arises, then what we have to do is i plus plus. Okay, got it? Because in a range, let's say this is a range. Now in this range, uh, if you find a, a number of true, let's say a number of true, if it is less than k, then this range is valid. That is because we can change the number of true to false, and this complete range can have false. Now also, if the number of false is less than k, then also this range is valid because we can flip that k false to true, right? So at at a time in a one range, we are checking the values. We are checking the answer for both. Uh, if all are true and if all are false, let's see how we would do that. So uh, initially, i and j are here. They both are zero. Now uh, after this, the number of true uh, would change to one, and this would be zero. Yeah, and also uh, remember this case two here. And now after uh, okay, uh, now this is our condition where we change the i. But now this condition is not satisfied because number of false is the minimum is zero and zero is not greater than k. Now after this change uh, j to here, then the number of true uh, increases to two and this is zero. Then again change j to here. Now after this, this is two, this is one. Okay, and yeah, one more thing we would also maintain one variable answer. So that would be nothing but a size of the window. Here the window size is one. Here two. Here three. It, we would compare with the current window size as well as the answer. Now uh, here also the max uh, maximum minimum of both of them it is not greater than k. Then yeah, simply keep on updating j. Now here j turns out to be three. This is one, and the window we can get here is four. Now then j turns j becomes to here. This is four. This is uh, two, and here our answer is five. Now j comes to here. This is okay. Wait a minute. This is not four. This is three. This is here. It is three. Here it is three. And here. Now wait. So you can see the number of true as well as uh, the minimum of both of them. That is n t and n f is three. And three is greater than k here. Okay. Now in that case, we would keep on updating k un until this condition is satisfied. So yeah, we would update the i. Okay. So we would update the i to here. Now, if you update i to here, this value uh, number of true value changes to two because one two is one true is gone in the window. Now the window is from this i to this j. Okay. Now check the minimum of both of them. If it is greater than k, no, then yeah, we can move ahead with the j. So update. Now the answer is j minus i. So that is five minus uh, how many characters? Five characters are there. So yeah, five. Then update j to here. Now at this point. Number of true becomes three. This also becomes three. Again, uh, the minimum of both of them is greater than k. So we update i here. Now after updating, we will find uh, that number of false reduces to two. Uh, sorry, num not false, but number of true reduces to two. And yet, yeah, minimum of both of them is not greater than k. So yeah, we can move ahead. And yeah, here the answer is also what five. So you can see the maximum answer we can get here is five, right? And yeah, afterwards there is nothing. So yeah, at a time what we are checking, we are checking number of true as well, number of false as well. And if minimum of one of them get, becomes greater than k, then we have to update our left uh, left bound of our window. Why we have to do this? Because at that point we won't be able to get the valid answer. See, at the, see at this point, let's let me try to explain you in bit more detail. Okay, uh, so let's say at from uh, from here to here, you can uh, see the number of t's. Uh, three and number of f is two. Okay, from this i, from here to here, right? So that uh, so this is a valid window because in this window we can change two uh, two times that is two times f to true and that's why we, since we have k is two so this is a valid window, right? So yeah, that's why we are taking minimum of one of them. 
okay if minimum of one of them is less than equal to k then yeah we are good because we can change that minimum but if there it is greater than k then we have to update our window now the same thing we would do here uh th this is to count number of true and number of false in the current window so our window initially starts from 0 and 0 uh if we have false then we would update if you have true then we would update now and if this condition is uh, hit that means number of minimum of both of them is greater than k then in that case we would shift our ith window or the left bound of the window right and yeah and we would also keep tracking of answer each time and uh, then simply return the answer and yeah the time complexity of this approach is big of and so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you